Need a hand? No, thanks. I'm good. Despite originally being released back in March 1997, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is still one of the most talked about teenage drama series to come out of America today. It focuses on Buffy Summers, played by Sarah Michelle Gellar, a rebellious yet otherwise normal high schooler who at 16 years old is chosen by fate as the next vampire slayer. Buffy and her friends, the bookish Willow Rosenberg, played by Alison Hannigan, and the well-meaning Alexander Harris, played by Nicholas Brendan, try to navigate their adolescent emotions while saving Sunnydale from demons, but end up finding out that good and evil aren't as clearly defined as one may think. Showrunner Joss Whedon led Buffy the Vampire Slayer's success, amassing a total of 144 episodes across seven successful seasons, ending in 2003. That probably would have sounded more commanding if I wasn't wearing my yummy sushi pajamas. Here are 23 facts about Buffy the Vampire Slayer that you haven't heard before, including why episodes were edited before airing in the UK, who taught James Masters Spike's British accent, and the spin-off Slyke Angel that never got the green light. Buffy the Vampire Slayer was almost always shot in Los Angeles, California, which mimicked the fictional Californian town of Sunnydale. The damned Sunnydale High School was set on top of a hellmouth, an opening through which demons and monsters could enter the human world and reality. Joss Whedon, Buffy the Vampire Slayer's creator, cites that high school is hell is one of the main metaphors in the series. Torrance High School in California is the location used for Sunnydale High School in the first three seasons of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and is the same high school used in the filming of Darren Starr's Beverly Hills 90210. You see Sunnydale? I will be matriculating with a class of 2003. Are you serious? Say, isn't that where you're going? Oh. <laughs> Due to budget restrictions in the early seasons, the only sets created for Buffy the Vampire Slayer were the library in which Giles Anthony Stewart Head worked, Buffy's bedroom, and the underground lair of season one's big bad, The Master, played by Mark Metcalf. Interestingly, the Sunnydale School Library was actually stocked with real books. In season two of Buffy, the production team built the sets for the homes of Buffy herself, Angel and Giles, as well as extending the high school and transforming one of the Fox Studio driveways into a graveyard. It was only during season three of Buffy the Vampire Slayer that the main street of Sunnydale was built. I'm fine. I just need to die for a minute. Joss Whedon, Buffy the Vampire Slayer's creator, has said in interviews that he wanted to create a show that would switch the Hollywood convention of the little blonde girl going down a dark alleyway and gets killed in every horror movie. He instead wanted Buffy to be about female power, having it, using it and sharing it, which can definitely be seen at play during the final season of the show. Buffy the Vampire Slayer has many powerful female characters away from Summers herself. Willow in season six, Anya's power as a vengeance demon, Glory the God in Season 5, and the power Dawn holds as a key. Joss Whedon is cited as describing Buffy the Vampire Slayer as my so-called life crossed with the X-Files. You're dead. I may be dead, but I'm still pretty. Which is more than I can say for you. Buffy the Vampire Slayer started off life as a movie in 1992, in which Buffy was played by Christy Swanson, who was also known for the John Hughes film Pretty in Pink. Whilst an entertaining standalone feature, the film's director, Fran Rubel Kazooie, adapted Whedon's original script from a scary film about an empowered woman into a pop culture comedy, and Whedon alluded to the film version losing its intended edge. The 90s film adaptation of Buffy the Vampire Slayer featured Donald Sutherland as Merrick the Watcher, who informs Buffy of her destiny, Rutger Hauer as Lothos, the local vampire king, and David Arquette as Benny, a cynical schoolboy who gets turned into a vampire. Ha <coughs> 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 ha! Someone get an ouchie? The film's director, Fran Rubel Kazooie, and her husband, Kaz Kazooie, are credited on the television version of Buffy the Vampire Slayer as executive producers on every episode, despite never being involved in the creation of the show. They were also credited as executive producers on the spin off show Angel, but they never stepped onto the set. The Buffy the Vampire Slayer creator Joss Whedon uses High School is Hell for the central theme and created scenarios and demons to reflect the anxieties teenagers go through in adolescence. One of the key writers of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Jane Espenson, has discussed on her own website how a script came together for each episode. The writers of Buffy the Vampire Slayer would sit and decide firstly the emotional issues that Buffy the character would be facing, and how she would be confronting them through the supernatural. 
You are the chosen one. You alone can stop them. Who? The vampires. Sarah Michelle Gellar wanted to finish up filming Buffy the Vampire Slayer while the show was still at its peak in season 7, but the Buffyverse carried on for an eighth season in comic book form. Buffy the Vampire Slayer has been continued in comics since 1998 by Dark Horse Comics and now Boom Studios. Not all of the issues are considered canonical, but episodes 1 to 63 were released as official Buffy merchandise while the show was still on air. They include characters who were not originally in the television series, but they also continue arcs of some of the smaller characters such as Oz. Dark Horse Comics released a Buffy the Vampire Slayer season 8, 9 and 10, as well as many spin-offs including Willow and Tara, partially written by Amber Benson who plays Tara, and Spike and Drew, partially written by James Masters who plays Spike. Joss Whedon supervises and occasionally writes the comic book series and officially classes them as part of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer canon. Dark Horse Comics have also released a season 6 of Angel and an Angel and Faith themed spin-off. Let's go to work. In the UK, audiences would watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer on BBC2. However, it was given a pre-watershed time slot before 9pm, which meant some of the material featured had to be edited out to comply with strict broadcasting rules around when children would be watching. Fans were unhappy with the edits, so the BBC ended up giving Buffy the Vampire Slayer two time slots, one for the edited family-friendly version with the violence cut out, and a late-night version, which aired in full on Friday nights. Did I get it? Did I get it? Just a quick interruption to say thank you so much for clicking on a January Media video. If you haven't heard of us before, then take a few seconds to open a new tab, type in januarymedia.co.uk. We've got a whole host of other videos, articles and podcasts all about TV and film. So if you want to find out more facts, have a go at some of our quizzes and browse our entertainment themed shop, then make sure you visit januarymedia.co.uk after you watch this video. While the Buffy the Vampire Slayer producers usually used unsigned artists to play on stage at the Sunnydale nightclub, the Bronze, due to their believable sound, some episodes featured well-known artists in the 1990s. Famous acts that had their songs play at the Bronze were Blink-182, The Dandy Warhols, Sarah McLachlan, and Coldplay. The Buffy the Vampire Slayer soundtrack became increasingly popular and four soundtrack CD compilations were released during its run, including the iconic Once More With Feelings soundtrack from the musical episode. Before landing on Sarah Michelle Gellar, actors including Katie Holmes and Selma Blair were in the running for the title role of Buffy Summers. Many other actors who featured in Buffy the Vampire Slayer originally auditioned for the part of Buffy herself, including Charisma Carpenter, who plays Cordelia Chase, Mercedes McNabb, who plays Harmony Kendall, and Julie Benz, who plays Darla. Sarah Michelle Gellar, on the other hand, originally auditioned for the role of Cordelia Chase before being asked by Joss Whedon to come back in and read for the lead. So, the Slayer. Yeah, that's me. We thought you were a myth. Well, you were myth taken. One of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer's main and best loved characters, Angel David Boreanaz, was only meant to star briefly in the pilot episode. Nathan Fillion was one of the actors in the running to play Angel before starring in the role of Caleb in season 7. Unbelievably, a talent scout spotted David Boreanaz out walking his dog and rang up the Buffy casting director, Marsha Shulman, to say that they had found their Angel. <laughs> Is there a problem, ma'am? Yeah, there's a problem. Why are you following me? I know what you're thinking. Don't worry, I don't bite me. Unlike the other cast members of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Nicholas Brendan, who plays one third of the Scooby Gang, Xander Harris, had very little acting experience. He had many jobs, including a plumber's assistant, a veterinary janitor, waiter, and food delivery driver, before breaking into acting to overcome a stutter. He secured the role of Xander Harris with only four days of auditioning, beating Ryan Reynolds and Danny Strong, who later went on to play Jonathan. There are men, better men, wherein the mind is stronger than the penis. Nothing can defeat the penis! <laughs> Too loud. Very unseen. Alison Hannigan was the last of the original six members to be appointed in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Her positive and juvenile approach to playing Willem Rosenberg was different to other actors who auditioned and was ultimately the reason that she was hired. Alison Hannigan is also the reason that the music from the Californian rock band Nerf Herder was chosen for the Buffy the Vampire Slayer opening titles. She had recommended Joss Whedon listen to the band. 
And how would you know? You weren't even there. If I had been, I'd have bloody well stopped you. The magics you channeled are more ferocious and primal than anything you can hope to understand, and you are lucky to be alive, you rank, arrogant amateur. Unlike many other successful TV series, Buffy the Vampire Slayer actually achieved a successful spin-off show, Angel, which ran from October 1999. It followed troubled vampire with a soul and Buffy's first love interest, Angel, as he relocated to Los Angeles. It has a much darker tone than Buffy the Vampire Slayer itself, and sees Angel work as a private detective under the guise of Angel Investigations, removing demons from the LA area. Angel saw many original cast members of Buffy the Vampire Slayer join the show, including Charisma Carpenter, who played Cordelia, and Alexis Denisoff, who appeared in the last nine episodes of season three of Buffy the Vampire Slayer as the dithering English watcher Wesley Wyndham Price. Other characters who appeared in the spin-off were Spike, Oz, Faith, Willow, Darla, Drusilla, and Buffy Summers herself. The storyline of Angel was also continued into comic book form in a sixth season, and in the spin-off series named Angel and Faith. If I can barely tie her shoes without Mr. Oh, you're my big fat hero. Around. Think I'm fat. Other proposed spin-offs for Buffy the Vampire Slayer were Buffy the Animated Series, which would take place after season one, and a 90-minute BBC special called Ripper, focusing on Buffy's watcher Rupert Giles, presumably in his younger days. Slayer School was another, featuring new Slayers, like season seven of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but it included Willow in the lead role. And Faith, a show following Eliza Dushku's character driving around on a motorcycle. There was even a proposed Spike movie. You got any of those little marshmallows? Let me look. Many film and television academics have been attracted to the Buffyverse as a topic for literary and cultural analysis. Many books and papers have been published with an academic and analytical approach to Buffy the Vampire Slayer through the lens of sociology, psychology, philosophy, and women's studies. According to Entertainment Weekly, Buffy Summers has been voted as the third greatest character of all time, behind Homer Simpson and Harry Potter. I'm the Slayer. Slayer. Chosen one. She who hangs out a lot in cemeteries? Rhonda Wilcox is named as the foremost authority on Buffy the Vampire Slayer studies, writing on characters and themes. Her book Why Buffy Matters, The Art of Buffy the Vampire Slayer was released in 2005, and she is the editor of Slayage, the Journal of Whedon Studies, now the Whedon Studies Association, who hold the annual Slayage Conference. Don't forget, you're supposed to be a meek little girly girl like the rest of us. Well, my fun. Vampire Spike is well known for his bleach blonde hair and flowing floor length leather jacket, stolen from his second Slayer battle in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It is reported that his iconic coat cost 2,000 US dollars, but the costume team needed to make it look more distressed to simulate it being worn for many years and in battle. So they repeatedly ran over it with a truck. Buffy Summers and the Scooby Gang are well known for their unique slang, and many of the phrases used in Buffy the Vampire Slayer made it into late 90s and early noughties teen vernacular. Joss Whedon and fellow Buffy the Vampire Slayer writers use slang to separate the younger and older characters. Giles on many occasions mimics their wording, and Buffy apologises for her pop culture references. Buffyisms include wig, as in to wig out, to be freaked out, feel wiggy or get the wiggins, Faith's trademark 5x5 suggesting that she feels neutral or fine, as well as the now common sitch replacing situation. One of the most notable phrases to be born out of Buffy the Vampire Slayer is Google it, which was first used by Willow Rosenberg. Have you Googled her yet? Willow, she's 17. At the end of each Buffy the Vampire Slayer episode, the credits roll and the card for Mutant Enemy Productions is played, accompanied by a comical voice saying Gur Arg. The famous Gur Arg is actually voiced by Joss Whedon himself. The name Mutant Enemy was created by Joss Whedon at 15 years old for his first ever typewriter, and the company's logo was drawn in 20 minutes after being told that he needed one. Hello? Another large expense on the set of Buffy the Vampire Slayer was the special effects and computer graphics used to dust a vampire during an episode. It reportedly cost around 5,000 US dollars each time it was used. I apologize. I assumed you knew. I'm Dracula. 
get out. Despite playing everyone's favourite bleach blonde British bad boy vamp in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, James Masters is actually from California and has a strong American accent. He was tutored by Anthony Stewart Head, who plays Buffy's watcher and father figure Rupert Giles. Head also tweaks his own British accent using a more refined tone than his own on set. Cup of tea, cup of tea, almost got shagged, cup of tea. According to Buffy the Vampire Slayer creator Joss Whedon, he based the character of Alexander Harris on himself and Cordelia Chase on a girl his wife attended high school with. Nicholas Brendan was apparently told by producers to limit the amount of working out that he did, as they didn't want Xander looking too buffed. Hey, we got your steak. In early drafts of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, writer Joss Whedon gave Buffy the power to move objects with her mind, as well as being able to speak to the dead. However, this was removed from the final plot. Surely the episode The Body would have been much less traumatising for us all to watch if that was the case. Despite Buffy the Vampire Slayer being over since 2003, you ask any fan who Buffy Summers was meant to end up with and you'll get half saying Angel and half saying Spike, and pretty much no one saying Riley. The show's chicken or the egg question. Joss Whedon himself says that he prefers Buffy and Spike together, but Sarah Michelle Gellar prefers her character being with Angel. What are you doing? My boyfriend. Go away. Who are you? Let's just say I'm a friend. Yeah, well, maybe I don't want a friend. I didn't say I was yours. <laughs>